Bienvenidos, Husham Deed, and welcome to another supplemental video tutorial and solution set on the Cisco Networking Academy Introduction to Python course Lab 2.1.6.11. In this lab, we're going to be taking another look at operators and expressions, and this is probably one of the most difficult labs that learners will encounter in the first few modules of this course. So let's dive in and take a look. And it's interesting that the lab is actually listed, and we're going to come back to this here in just a second. The lab is actually listed as being easy. Now, as an instructor, what you want to do, if this is a lab you're going to assign, I'm going to talk about some of the things you're going to want to emphasize before learners get to this lab. You can see that it says 15 to 20 minutes. However, if learners are not primed and you haven't given them the scaffolding, in other words, the foundation on which to solve something like this, this could be a multi-day problem. This could be very, very difficult to uh, pull off. So here are the objectives. We're going to improve uh, the ability to use numbers and operators. And here's the scenario down here. So our task is to prepare a simple piece of code to evaluate the end time of a period of time. And it says given as a number of minutes, it could be arbitrarily large, which is what they're going to do down below for our input time. Now, the start time is given as a pair of hours, and it's using a 24-hour clock. And this is typically the first thing uh, that confuses learners, is a 24-hour military-style clock. Uh, so it definitely does some uh, good to discuss how a military clock functions. It goes once it gets to 12, it then goes to 13, and then all the way to 2359, and then back over to uh, basically zero. And so then we've got our minutes. We're familiar with that. Now, for example, if an event started at 1217 and lasts for 59 minutes, it will end at 1316. Here's the next piece of difficulty where the learner's going to look at this and they're immediately going to see and should make the connection that, okay, if it lasts a minute short of an hour, the hour is going to increment. In other words, the hour is going to roll over to the next hour. So instead of 12, it would be 13. And so the question then becomes, okay, well, how do I get the 16? And so again, breaking this down into smaller, more manageable chunks is where we're going to be most effective. So the first thing I wanna point out is, it says test your code carefully, using the modulus operator uh, may be the key to success. And so this is gonna become critical. Now, if you haven't covered the modulo operator, I highly recommend that you do it before this lab is assigned. And so here's how I cover the modulo operator uh, briefly here. And let's actually, we'll come out to the interactive interpreter window right here. You can see I've already cut and paste the beginning code there. And so remember, if I was to say 10 modulo three, right? What I'm really saying is how many times does three go into 10 and what is the remainder, right? Because the remainder is what we're going to be interested in. So in other words, if I had 100 modulo six, we're trying to figure out how many times six goes into 100 and what the remainder would be. And as you would expect, if I said 10, or I said, let's say 100 modulo 10, we would expect that the remainder is going to be zero because 10 goes into 100 10 times evenly. There is no remainder. Now, the other aspect of this operator that I discuss is what happens when the larger number is on the right side of the modulo operator. So if I was to say 3 modulo 10, what would we get? Now, you might be thinking, well, you're going to get one because three goes into 10 three times. But again, remember, we've changed the order here with the operands. The modulo operator is still in the middle, but the operands have switched. So what we're saying with this is how many times does 10 go into three and what is the remainder? Well, 
10 doesn't go, you can't uh, divide three by 10. It's not going to work. And so what would happen is it would go in zero times and then the remainder is actually what this number is. And this is true. This number on the left-hand side, if it's lower than the number on the right-hand side, and I'll put something ridiculous here, what we are going to get will always be the number that's on the left-hand side. Because in other words, you're basically saying that this goes in zero times, and so then the remainder would be what we have right there, right? And that's how you would look at it when the number on the left is smaller than the number on the right. When the number on the right is smaller than the number on the left, then we're dividing the number on the left by the number on the right, trying to get the remainder. And so these are some of the things that I talk about. And as we take a look at this problem here, 2.1.6.11, the first thing we're going to notice is, okay, so we've got hours, uh, and I'll change that to, we'll say, hours, minutes, and duration. And then we're going to put our code here. I'm going to work this in the other window. But what I wanted to come back and show you was take a look at the sample input. So 12 hours, 17 minutes, and the duration is 59 minutes. So you're probably looking at that and saying, okay, if it's 17 minutes and 59 minutes, what is that going to look like? Well, we can simply come over to the interactive interpreter and say 17 plus 59, and we get 76. And so you're probably looking at that thinking, okay, well, if 76 is the total number of minutes and there's 60 minutes in an hour, remember, we would want to cap the minutes at 60 because anything over that, it's gonna roll and give us another hour. It's gonna add an additional hour to what we're doing. And so we've got the number of minutes and we have the duration and we end up with 76. So the modulo is important and this is where you've got to make the connection. The learner would need to make the connection that, okay, this is where I would say something like 17 plus 59 modulo 60, right? Representing the 60 minutes that are in an hour because I want to get the difference. However, this is also where the order of operations comes in. And so you can see that this problem is not as straightforward as laid out in the description. So if I was to hit enter now, you can see that we get 76. And you might be asking yourself, well, wait a second. How are we getting 76 when 17 plus 59 is 76? And we have the modulo 60. Because remember, what I just told you up here was that if the lower numbers on the right-hand side and the larger numbers on the left-hand side, I should get the remainder. But I'm not getting the remainder here. What I'm getting is 17 plus 59. Why? And it all comes down to the order of operations in math when the modular character, I keep saying, modulus character is used. So let's come over here to our web browser and let's go to the page that came up right away. And we can see we've got the modulo operator here and uh, modular arithmetic is a system of arithmetic for integers, etc. And you can see right here, it talks about where numbers wrap around. And so to this point in the course, right, using the tools we have in this program, we're not checking to see if they enter in something, uh, you know, in terms of hours, it's going to put us at 38 hours or something like that. So, you know, you're using the tools, the operators and the different features of Python that we've learned to this point in the course. But this is the key right here. The modulo operator is at a higher uh, level of precedence than subtraction and addition, which means that the modulo is going to be evaluated first. And so if we come back to this example here, that's exactly what you're seeing, is that this is being evaluated first. And so then based off what I've told you here, when the number on the left is less than the number on the right, 
what number is returned? It's the number on the left of the modulo operator. And if we get 59 back and then addition takes place, we end up with 76. And so now here's where hopefully you've done the investigation or at least sorted out that, okay, the modulo is being evaluated first. It's resulting in 59. And so that's why I'm getting 76. But what I want is I want the remainder, right? If I did 76 modulo 60, that's what I'm looking for. And that's what I need to get. And so we've talked a lot about parentheses throughout the course so far. And here's where the parentheses are going to be key. Because if I want the addition to be evaluated before the modulo operation, I need to drop things into parentheses. So I would say 17 plus 59 and then modulo 60. Remember, PEMDAS, parentheses are the first thing. Things inside parentheses are the first things to be evaluated. Then exponentiation, then multiplication, then division, then addition, and then subtraction. And again, when we looked here, sorry, we'll come back to the browser. When we looked here, you could see that it's multiplication, then division, then the modulo, then addition, then subtraction. And so our PEMDAS, we could actually add in another M after division, but of course that would break the PEMDAS, right? And typically when we're talking about PEMDAS, we're working with learners who are, you know, not mathematically inclined, so to speak, and just learning math. And so something to help them with equations. And so this should yield the minutes that we're looking for. And again, if I go back to the lab, let's take a look and see, and they, I think they actually show us, <clears throat> excuse me, yeah, the expected output is 1316, right? And so if the expected output is 1316, we know that we've already nailed the minutes portion of things, right? All right, so, and that was the easier of the two that we're working with. So now that you've figured out, okay, if something rolls over, I can use the modulo operator. This is how I would use it. I've got to make sure I keep very a very close eye on the order of operations here to get the result that I'm looking for. And so let's go ahead and we'll add some code in here. Now the user's being prompted right now <clears throat> excuse me. And you can see that everything is being typecast. We're using functional composition here. We're typecasting the default uh, data type that we get back from the input function, which is a string. We're typecasting it to an integer for the hours, the minutes, and the duration. So now I have the new minutes, right? I've got the equation for the new minutes. And what is it? Well, 17 was the minutes, and let me double check that to make sure that that's what was gonna be input. Yep, 17 was gonna be input. So uh, the mins, right? And then we're gonna add that to the duration, and that's that 17 plus 59. We drop that in parentheses, then we bring in the modulo character, and we put in 60. And so we could even test this code with a quick print statement. Let's go ahead and say the new minutes value will be, and let's drop this over here and we'll say new underscore minutes. All right, so let's hit F5. We're gonna save this off as lab 21611. So let's go ahead and say 2.1.6.11.py. And then let's let this run. And over here, it's gonna say uh, number of starting hours, I think it was 12 and then 17. And then duration is gonna be 59. And the new minutes value will be 16, right? So we've got the 16 right now. So now we need to think of how are we going to get the hours? Well, remember, there are how many minutes in an hour? So let's come over here back to the interactive interpreter and let's talk about that for a second. In fact, let me get the values here real quickly. So 12, 17, 59, okay. So when we talk about the hours, how are we going to come up with that? 
Well, again, the modulo operator is going to be key here and the minutes and the duration are still going to be important. So if I was to take the minutes, which is 17, and then add that to the duration, which is 59, we know that we get 76. Now, I know that when I did the minutes and duration modulo 60, we get the remainder, but the remainder is not what I'm after here. So if I was to say, if I have 76 minutes, if I divide that, right, and I'm doing, you can see here, I'll go ahead and do uh, right out of the gate, we'll do floor division. If I was to leave the single forward slash, we'd be doing floating point division. But with time, right, when you're telling time, it isn't 12 or 13, 16, dot 18257, right? So we want to do floor division here. And what if I divided that by 60, right? In other words, I already know it's going to be 16 minutes on the other side of the hour. I'm trying to figure out how many additional hours I'm going to have. So in other words, let's say the duration was 190 minutes. So Right now it's at 17. The duration is at, uh, what did I say? Let's just say 190 minutes, right? So let's say it goes for over three hours. That gives me 207. If I was to say 207, do floor division here, right? So that I don't have to typecast uh, the result back. Uh, and then what am I doing here? 207 and then divide by 60, right? That's an additional three hours. Now, remember, I would already have worked with that number to try to get the, you know, do the modulo with 60 to get the minutes, what we'd look like on the minutes. But that gives me that we've got an additional three hours. And so the additional hours would be added to what? Yeah, it'd be added to the existing, the starting time hours, right? So if it's 12 and I know that we're, adding, uh, when I did the 76 divided by 60, we're adding one, right? So pretty straightforward there, right? So when I add that up, I end up with 12 plus one, and that gives me 13. So now the question becomes, we know that the new hours, and I guess, yeah, I'll leave it at hours. I'll leave this uh, up here as hour. Uh, so when we get the new hour value, right, based off of our work here doing division, uh, we're going to be ready to go. But remember, we've got some bizarre input that they want us to test over here. And you can see they want us to start at 2358 and then add in 642 minutes or zero and one and add in 2939 minutes. And remember, our code needs to function uh, with all of that. And you can see they give us the expected values so that we can validate the values that we're seeing. So let's come over here and let's go ahead and say, and I'll do it down below this here. So if I said new hour, right? And how have we calculated the new hour over to the left-hand side there, right? What, what did that calculation look like? Well, remember with PEMDAS, if we're gonna add some values together, we're doing addition and then we've got division. Division takes precedence over, over addition, right? Because DAS, so the division would be done first. So if I did something like this, if I said 17 plus 59, divided by 60, I'm going to end up with 17, right? But that's not what I got when I divided 76 by 60 up here. And again, remember, it's all about the order of operations. And this is a very tricky little problem that we're dealing with. But if I drop things in and I said 17 minutes uh, plus 59 minutes, and then divided that by 60, then we get the additional hours, right? And so hopefully you can see that, right? It's all about the order of operations here with this problem. So the new hour would be, uh, and we're gonna have the starting time is 12 and hours. So let's do this. The first thing I need to do 
is we're going to get, I'm just thinking this through here. So what we want to do is we want to add the minutes. So I'm going to, I'm not multiply. I'm going to add uh, the minutes and the duration again. So the minutes plus the duration. And then we're going to, oops, sorry. We're going to divide that by 60. And so I'm going to wrap all of this up here. And then we're going to add uh, to the hour. Oops, sorry, to the hour. And so you can see what we're doing here, right? So remember, inside the parentheses, right? So that's the, the minutes. Oops, sorry, mins. Uh, the mins and the duration are going to be added together first. Then, because that's the inner parentheses, and then the next parenthetical expression would be 76 divided by 60. And we know what that's going to yield. And this is where the interactive interpreter really helped us out a lot. We're going to get one. And then we're going to add that to the existing hour value, which is 12, because that's what we're entering in here initially, right? And so that should give us the value that we're looking for. And let's go ahead and print this out and say the new hour value will be, and we just simply say new underscore hour. All right. And so that should show us that the new hour has changed to 13. Now, these other values that they want us to enter in may cause us to have to come back here, but let's see what happens. So we're going to say 12 and then 17 and then 59. And there we go. The new minutes value will be 16. The new hour value will be 13. At this point, all we need is a print statement to say the new time is, and we're going to do this. Let's see. We're going to do this like this. Um, so the new time is, and then I'm going to say, let's do new underscore hour. And then I'm going to put it right up against, oops, sorry. I don't want that new underscore hour. And we'll do a colon in between. And then we'll say new underscore minutes. And that should give me, just double checking my syntax here, new underscore minutes, new underscore hour. All right, let's see what we get from this. And uh, if We can drop out. I'm just thinking about how that's going to look because we're going to have a space. So I think this is going to look a bit off here. Let's see what we get. So we'll say OK. And let's say 12 and 17 and then 59. And so you can see what happens here is we get that space character in between, right? The default that we get. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to step that out. And we're going to go ahead and say that the new separator is going to be a blank and so let's see if that gives us anything different using them just thinking in terms of the values and the sort of tricks they've shown us so far and there we go the 13 and the 16 are right next to each other i added a space oops sorry added a space right in there right because we want a space after that colon but we don't want a space around the colon over here right in the middle because we need the hours and the minutes right next to each other all right so we've got this much of the code working again definitely not a very straightforward uh program so now let's go ahead and run the other values through and see do we need to do anything else because remember they're adding in a significant number of minutes here so my expectation 23 58 642 so 23 50 sorry 58 and 642 and let's see what we get so we get 34 40. well take a look over here you can see that the expected output is 10 40. Uh, and again, because the clock has rolled over, and while it worked with the first set of values, it's not working with this set of values. So what do we need to do? Well, let's come back over, and let's take a look at the equation that we had. And you can see here that we had new hour was the minutes plus the duration, 
uh, divided by 60, and then we added in the new hour. Well, they talked about the modulo, right? So there's 60 minutes in an hour, but how many hours in a day? And this is where the next modulo operation comes in. And remember, there are 24 hours in a day. So if I said modulo 24, and we need to be careful here, right? Because what's going to end up taking precedence, we want all of this to occur before the modulo 24 takes place before we, we need the result on the left hand side of the modulo sim, uh, operator before we have it do its operation and so what i could do is drop a parenthesis there and a parenthesis here and then we use the modulo 24 against all of that and again we're using floor division so no need for type casting here and let's see if this actually works and so before we do that, let's see what would happen over here. Uh, remember, we got 3440. So what if I said 34 modulo 24? And again, the question is, how many times does 24 go into 34? And what is the remainder? Well, it would go in one time with a remainder of 10. And hopefully you're starting to see now that that's how they ended up with that 10 value. Uh, the 40 we had was correct already, right? Nothing we need to do there. So now we know that we just need to get everything on the left-hand side of our equation. Oops, sorry. The left-hand side of our equation all set up. And then we do the modulo 24. Again, tackling it using leveraging the interactive command uh, the interactive interpreter and breaking it into smaller chunks and again this is not a very easy problem to handle so now let's rerun the program and let's go ahead and say uh 2358 642 so we say 2358 642 and we should end up with 1040. so that works great now Let's go back. Let's test again here. Let's see what the first one, which was 12, 17, and 59 yields. We need to make sure that still works, that we didn't break anything by doing that modulo 24, and we didn't, right? So there we go. We've got that configured because remember, the modulo 24, if it was 13 hours, remember what's going to happen here. 13 modulo 24. How many times does 24 go into 13? It goes in zero. And the remainder's 13. So we still, even with the modulo 24 added in, remember, if the number on the left-hand side of the modulo operator is less than the number on the right-hand side of the modulo operator, you're going to end up with the number on the left-hand side of the modulo operator. Because clearly 24 does not go into 13. It goes in there zero times. And then the remainder is the left-hand operator, 13. All right, let's take one last swing here at the sample input, 012939. Uh, this one's making me a little bit nervous here. So let's see what happens. So we'll say zero hours. Let me make sure I got that right. One minute. And the duration is 2939. And there it is. We end up with one colon zero, just like the program, or just like the lab indicated the program would provide back to us. So this is listed as easy. I'm not so sure, right? And it, it, a lot depends on how you're priming your learners when you reach this lab. Have you given them enough exposure to the modulo operator uh, and maybe talked about this at a more basic level before giving them. I mean, this problem here reminds me a lot of the one over, uh, what was it? One plus X over one plus X over one plus X over one, right? I mean, that escalated pretty quickly from, hey, let's add two numbers together. Hey, let's multiply two numbers together. So remember, try to bridge that gap. Okay, well, that is going to do it for this supplemental video tutorial and solution set on the Cisco Networking Academy Intro to Python Course Lab 2.1.6.11. I really appreciate you watching. Stay happy, stay healthy, and I hope to see you in a new video soon.